As a summer themed video, today's stories focus on a beach theme. Before getting into these, I would like to talk- Oh yo, YouTube Frogs, by the way, what's good? Welcome in. I'm Chris. I hope you enjoy your stay. We're watching three disturbing true beach stories by Mr. Nightmare. If you want to check them out, they'll be the first link in the description. If you do stick around and you enjoy your stay, feel free to drop a, a like and a sub. That'd be so sick. Also, second link in the description. Holy flipping hack, dude. Second link in the description is um my Twitch stream. It'd be cool. Keep it going out. All right. Anyway, I heard whistle. Did they mean like an Aztec death whistle? Maybe. Talk about today's sponsor, Fume. We all have bad habits and sometimes breaking- Oh, I was about to I was about to skip this, but this is actually a fire ad. Habits can be tough. Like when you're out with friends and they're all reaching for their bad habits, you may feel that urge to not be the odd one out. Fume is here to help you kick those bad habits in an enjoyable way with something that you could take out with you. I actually want one of these and I'm not even like addicted to vaping or anything. It just looks like good, you know? Like I'm, I'm trying to like have something to like fiddle with. <laughs> Like the tism when I'm tisming out and be like, yo, let me hit my boom here real quick. Flavored air device is quickly becoming the leading alternative to vaping and smoking. And fume is the leader in that category. Fume fills the void ditching a bad habit can leave while you still have something to reach for. Walnut? Yo, what? Hands need something to do other than goon. Oh, Amara, I'm glad you're here. Um, I've decided to step up since Biden has left the campaign trail. Um, you may refer to me as Prezi Goon or Prez Goon, okay? Because uh, I will be the president, okay? And we're going to have a Goontopia. All right, buddy? So. It has no vapor or nicotine, and you can use it anywhere. Crisp mint is my favorite flavor, and with non-toxic flavors, it's a guilt-free alternative. Ooh. My favorite part is it requires no batteries, so you'll never need to charge it. The piece also looks cool and is made to be fidgeted with to help calm potential anxiety with magnets, snaps, and clicks. Yo! Fume is also backed by doctors in the US. Having served over 300,000 customers, you can be the next success story. For a limited time- I'm looking at this right now. Nightmare to get your free fume base when you order the journey pack. It's the all new magnetic stand for your fume device. Head to tryfume.com. That's tryfum.com and use code nightmare or scan the QR code on screen. They literally got me, bro. I'm entering my email address in this website. Until I was about 25, I lived in a beach town. My specific neighborhood was about a 20 minute walk from the beach. I'd say about 80% of my personality was beach related. I've been surfing longer than I've been able to speak and it would be an anomaly for me to shake out a pair of shoes and not have some amount of sand fall out. My two best friends, let's call them Armand and Chuck, were extroverted, outgoing, and charismatic. We were all 18 and very much obsessed with girls. It was a Saturday night in late May, just a few weeks what? before school let out. Senioritis had long since set in, and at this point, my friends and I regularly pushed the limits of how much we could get away with without getting in trouble. How freaky could we get before we get in trouble, dude? We already had our coveted college acceptances, so we didn't really care much about high school anymore. Armand and I had plans to meet up with two girls from our high school that we'd been- Okay, well, it didn't send me a thing. Is it supposed to text me? Because I got a text. I got a little texty thing. I got a little texty text. Did not get- Oh, here it is. My bad, dude. Let me continue. My bad. Getting along with really well at school. The plan was to pick the two of them up in the evening and enjoy a cool, breezy night on the beach. We had blankets and a few bottles of wine, the perfect combinations for stargazing on the beach. I don't condone drinking and driving to any capacity. Rolling, 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 got me stog. It's a hundred and seven dollars and 25 cents. Okay, so here's the thing, Foom. I'm a flipping brokey. All right, sorry, YouTube Frogs. You don't give a crap about those. I was just a stupid kid. I arrived at Sophia's house just after nine. Her and Fran sort of walk danced to the car. It was clear that they had a little something to drink beforehand. Armand and I exchanged some excited grins. It was going to be a fun night. I took a scenic route to a scenic beach. It was about a 30 minute drive. The whole time, the four of us were having a great time in the car cracking jokes and talking about some mutual friends. Guys, this might be a good time to say that I'm going to a beach in like two to three months. Oh, damn. If I didn't buy shoes, I could have clutches up. Anyway. Oh, hey, Amara. By the way, so sorry, YouTube Frogs. Okay, we're so going out of uh, pocket right now. 
Um, I know how you love Hassan. Yeah, his merch is all 50% off right now. And I know how you love the shop. So, yeah. Uh, you can just go to his YouTube channel. It's right underneath the little videos if you're trying to tap in. He's got t-shirts for 20 bucks. So, yep. T-shirts for 20 bucks. Hoodies for, like, I think he's got some for, like, 35. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. <laughs> I got you. I got you, Tripper. And it's all made in union factories. Unionized factories. So, also, the workers are watched out for. Yep. At one point, Fran and I were having a very deep philosophical conversation about the nature of time and death and such. Oh, hell yeah. We were I love all very much enjoying each other's company. Yeah. The specific beach I had chosen had a dirt path that you could drive a car up. From there, there was a more narrow sand path that we would walk. The path was actually pretty steep, but I had picked it because we were less likely to encounter any other people at such a secluded spot. Furthermore, this beach was further away from the main boardwalk, so the sky would be clearer for stargazing. I thought of everything. I parked my car as far up the dirt road as possible. Were they hanging out or was this... Oh, wait, were they trying to fornicate? Oh, dude, I was zoned out. I was so locked in on FUM. I'm so sorry. Yo. And the four of us hopped out. Armand and I carried the blankets and wine. I'll fast forward through the boring stuff. After a few hours and an empty bottle, Armand and I found ourselves separating. He and Fran walked up the beach, and Sophia and I walked in the opposite direction. Oh. After being separated by a decent amount of distance and darkness, I threw my blanket down, and we drunkenly fell asleep on top we of it. We started getting freaky. No? Are you kidding me? It you might be the Before best ever. Happened, Sophia tensed up. At first, I thought it was something that I had done, but then she whispered something. Do you hear that? I focused my <clears throat> attention and strained my ears, trying to hear something other than the gentle crashing of ocean waves. <laughs> I assumed she was just drunk, but then, to my surprise, I did hear something. It sounded almost like a whirring, like the sound a small engine would make. Oh, oh, uh, you're a dork. A whirring? A whirring? What is that? Guys, I might, like, go. Where are you going, dude? Hmm? Where are you going? Mm -mm. It's, it's 4.40 a.m. Where are you going, dude? Huh? You going down to, um, let's see, Sheets? Is that what you're going to? Okay. What else they got in uh, Kentucky for you to do at 4.40 a.m.? The sound seemed to be moving around. I couldn't pin down where it was even coming from. Then it seemed to fade away into nothing. Oh. It's nothing, I assured her, eager to resume what we had been doing. And that's what we did. Soon after, I fished my shirt from the sand and shook it out before throwing it over my head. Just then... Sophia, who was still lying on the blanket, shrieked. I whipped around to look at her and saw she was pointing up at something. I looked up, but couldn't see anything besides the blackness of the sky. I sat down next to her to get a better angle, and I was horrified. <laughs> From her point of view, the moon was perfectly aligned with what appeared to be a drone floating directly overhead. Oh. It hovered a little while longer before zipping up into the dark sky and disappearing out of sight. It all made sense. That noise that we had heard before was 100% the drone. Yeah. I got angry at myself for not realizing at the time. I then got sick at the thought of being watched that entire time. I glanced over at Sophia and could tell she had the same exact feeling. She put her head in her hands and started crying. Aww. I consoled her as best I could before suggesting we walk back to the car. The two of us made it to the car to find Armand and Fran already there. That's what I was about to say, Mar. I mean, don't get me wrong. Total break of privacy. Disgusting. That's it? You got, you were on drone getting a little bit freaky? Quickly explain the situation. The two of them were dumbfounded and I could feel the joy in them uh -huh. literally being sucked out. I began driving in silence in the direction of Sophia's house, eventually trying to lighten the mood with some conversation. It didn't work though. The girls agreed that they didn't feel safe going home just yet. So like drones, what's up with that? <laughs> Yo, what's that flying overhead, dude? What? <laughs> it was a Saturday night, so I didn't mind staying out late. I asked if we could hang out at either of their houses. They both shook. I've gotten freaky with something more freaky watching me, so that's some loser shit. Yeah, my therapist is hearing about this one, buddy. Their heads saying their parents wouldn't allow it. My house was off the table for the same reason, as was Armand's. 
I decided to ask Armand to call up Chuck, which he did. Chuck's house was massive and his parents were super chill. It was honestly the perfect spot. Super chill. To our delight, Chuck was free. I pulled into Chuck's driveway and parked the car. Armand and the two girls began making their way towards Chuck's front door, and I told them I'd catch up to them in a second. I needed a second to think about everything that had just happened. I was more shaken up than I was letting on, so I leaned my forehead against the steering wheel and closed my eyes in an attempt to calm down a bit. Honestly, those few seconds with my eyes closed really helped. Instinctively, I pulled out my phone, which I hadn't even touched since the incident. The screen lit up, and I stared at the single notification that sat on the display. I had to blink a few times to make sure I wasn't imagining it. Uh? My entire body froze as I stared in horror at the lone notification, AirTag found moving with you. Every emotion that I had just expelled from my body came crashing back. We were literally being tracked. I snapped out of my paralysis and what? jumped out of the car, examining every inch of the vehicle. Nothing on the front bumper, nothing in the grill, and nothing on the back. I started getting desperate, checking the seats and flipping floor mats. Still nothing. By now, sweat was pouring down my neck, and I could feel the hairs on my arms and legs clamping up. I got on my hands and knees and began examining the underside of my car. I got to the tire on the driver's side and began feeling around the tire well. And there it was. It was literally taped to the underside of the well. Impossible to find if you didn't know what you were looking for. I held the tag in my hand for a few seconds before throwing it to the ground and smashing it to pieces. Whoever had watched us on the beach with that drone knew where we were. Dude, that's not what you do. Oh my god, bro. Dude, you get those people hot off your trail is what you do, buddy. You get that thing, you wrap it in gas tape? <laughs> no, what am I talking about? You go down to a gas station, you just pop that bad boy in somebody else's car. <laughs> Oh, what's up, Jag off? You got a you got your oh you got your convertibles roof down at 3 a.m. Boom. Sayonara, sucker. <laughs> That's what you get. I'm poor and jealous. Bye bye. Here, get tracked by some freaky stalker with a drone. I didn't feel safe in Chuck's driveway all alone. It's actually a W plan. One Thank of the you. Broken air tag pieces and ran over to Chuck's front door. I told everyone what I had discovered, showing- Oh, hey, underpaid, overworked cashier, you have an air tag. <laughs> and the air tag pieces to prove it. They were even more horrified than I was, especially the girls. They checked their phones and saw the same notification. Chuck was particularly pissed off because we had been potentially tracked back to his house. After the panic subsided, we spent the rest of the night in Chuck's basement and ended up sleeping over. A couple weeks passed and nothing happened. Honestly, my friends and I were glad to forget about the whole thing, assuming it was entirely in the past now. The only way we could rationalize it was that some creep wanted to watch some young adults hook up on the beach and track their car to scare them. It was chilling to think about, but we were relieved that the situation hadn't escalated. One Sunday morning, about three weeks after the incident, I got a call from Chuck. He screamed through the phone for me to drive to his house as soon as possible, which I did. When I got there, he was standing in his driveway with a concerned look on his face and some paper in his hand. I was confused until I realized what he was holding. They weren't papers, but rather pictures. I examined them more closely, pictures of me from that night on the beach. They were grainy and dimly lit, but you could clearly see Sophia and I in revealing fashion. Uh oh. I was disgusted. I could only imagine how Sophia would feel upon finding out. Not knowing what to do, we called the police and explained the situation. They told us that there was essentially nothing they could do, but we insisted that they at least scan the photos for prints. They eventually got back to us saying the photos turned up nothing. Sophia was terrified that whoever sent them would try and blackmail her, and I feared the same. The experience was downright traumatizing. Luckily, nothing ever happened after that, probably because we had gotten the police involved. Sophia was never quite the same around me after what happens, and I can't blame her. I can only hope those pictures don't turn up later in my life. Damn, bro. My best friend Ricardo and I were 19. At the risk of sounding pretentious, the two of us come from well off- A biker gang and they'll find that shit? For real? 
North Jersey families and get to enjoy our summers down the Jersey New shore. Jersey! My house is in Belmar, New Jersey, and his is in Lavalette. Good job, dumbass. Dox yourself, why don't you? What the fuck, bro? It was a random summer night during the week, and Ricardo was driving the two of us from my house in Belmar down to Lavalette, about an hour drive. To be completely honest, I preferred hanging out in Ricardo's house, not only because it was a little nicer, but because the general vibe of Lavalette is more geared towards kids our age. If we weren't scouring the area for a party, we could enjoy some drinks on one of the many private beaches we technically weren't supposed to be on. I could go on and on about things to do down the shore, but for the sake of brevity, I'll try my best to get to the point. As we were driving down, we agreed that we'd opt for a quieter night. No partying, links, or anything that we might normally do. The two of us agreed to snag a few beers, roll a joint, and chill on one of the private beaches under the stars. Honestly, it sounded great. The two of us had been going pretty hard with some of our other friends. A break from partying was much needed. To anyone unfamiliar with the layout of Lavalette, there's a beach side and a bay side. Most of the beaches feature a really high dune and a steep drop off as you approach the ocean. If you were to stand at the ocean edge and look back, you'd see a pretty si high dune, more like high goon. My bad, man. Sizable hill of sand. After drinking a few drinks at Ricardo's place, we snagged some bikes from his garage and made our way toward the beach of our choice. For whatever reason, Ricardo insisted on journeying further than I'd ever been, which I didn't quite understand since all the beaches were basically the same. I really didn't mind a longer bike ride though, so I just went with it. Eventually, Ricardo decided on a desolate looking beach at the end of the road with no cars parked on it. Every house on the street had its lights off. I actually preferred this. This was back when weed was illegal in New Jersey. And we weren't too keen on getting caught. Yeah, it's, yeah it, it really wasn't scary. It was, like, creepy. I'm trying to think of the other ones. If they were, like, really that scary or if it was just, like, weird. Plus, we did have some drinks with us despite... I guess the thing is, is, like, these are allegedly true, so they can't be, like, that, that scary, you know? The fact that we were only 19. We hid our bikes under some shrubs. Then we made our way toward the beach. The two of us lit our J and smoked under the stars, the only sound being the light waves of the ocean and the accompanying wind. The beach stretched on endlessly in both directions, and the sand felt cool underneath our feet. The two of us got progressively drunker while we filled the air with laughter and conversation. Eventually, we just laid back in the sand, watching a sky full of stars in hopes of witnessing a shooting star. That's when we heard it. I heard it first. It was almost undetectable. The sound was like a metallic buzzing, sort of like the sound you'd hear in a massive gymnasium with large... His older videos are a lot better in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna have to tap in on that. I'm gonna have to go like way, way back. Large overhead lights. I really can't describe the sound anymore. Well, and also to be fair to Mr. Nightmare, like if you're really trying to find like true stories, how good can they, how many, how many like good ones can there really be, you know? Like before you're like, eh, run this one, eh, run this one, eh, this is clearly made up, this is clearly made up, this is clearly made up, eh, read this one. Better. It was a faint metallic buzz that couldn't possibly be anything caused by the beach. I sat up and stared at Ricardo, and I could tell the moment he started to hear it too. The two of us whipped our heads in every direction, looking into the darkness for the source of the drone. What if instead of Ricardo, it was Rockardo? Strangely, it was difficult to pin down exactly where the sound was coming from. It was just too faint to tell. We were beginning to get freaked out, but were too terrified to move. We assumed that whatever was making that noise would go away, and we wouldn't have to worry about it. There was literally no way we could be seen from our spot on that beach. It was way too dark, and the sound of the ocean definitely drowned out any sounds we had been making. I know it doesn't exactly sound scary, but I'd be lying if I said my heart wasn't pounding out of my chest. The drone continued on, and after another few minutes, Ricardo gestured for me to follow him. I nodded my head in agreement. Leaving was definitely the best option. Just like a scene from a movie, the exact second the two of us stood up, the droning went from a one to a five. It took every ounce of self-control I had to resist the urge to yell in fear. It wasn't a gradual shift. The sound literally increased in a split second, and it was definitely coming from our right. I felt the hairs on my neck stand up, and a wave of fear washed over me, tensing my body from- Yeah, I was about to say, another drone? Yo, buddy, name this three disturbing true beach horror stories with drones. 
Why aren't you going to be live tomorrow? I got to catch up on video and photo editing before I move. Kind of cringe. Yeah, kind of cringe. Head to toe. We stared into the darkness and still didn't see anything. But now the drone sounded so close to us that we instinctively started running toward the sand dune. I didn't even know what we were running from. All I knew was that something was seriously wrong and there was someone or something after us. As we were about halfway to the dune, I felt Ricardo play- What the fuck is this, an RC car from fucking Black Ops 2? That bitch going- <laughs> On your ass? I don't think it's even Black Ops 2 that has that. Or is it? Do they have that in there? I haven't played a Call of Duty in so long, I don't even know anymore, bro. It's a firm hand on my shoulder, abruptly stopping me uh -huh. from continuing to run. At first, I was confused, but then I saw what his gaze was fixated on. I glanced up toward the dune and saw it. There was a dark figure standing- You're good, hot mulligan. N probably not tonight, but I might be in call like tomorrow during the day if I do pull an all-nighter. Motionlessly at the peak of the dune, its arms were freakishly long, what? almost reaching its knees. It was ridiculously tall, and I was shocked at how it managed to stand so still. It was truly terrifying. Ricardo shouted at me, breaking my gaze from the figure, and we continued running, this time parallel to the beach. We ran to the next dune entrance and sprinted up the slope. As we made our way to the peak, we looked back at where we had just came from. I can still remember the terrifying sight that followed. Not only was the dark figure still on the dune, but there were maybe three or four more standing motionless on what? the What? Each one looked like they were facing us. We didn't have time to go back for our bikes. Instead, opting to run the entire way home. The next morning, we retraced our steps, but couldn't for the lives of us find those bikes. Maybe they had been stolen, or maybe whoever or whatever was stalking if us the next- on human then it should just go after the people itself. Yeah, what the- You got a drone? Oh, maybe it was an alien. <gasps> maybe the alien really wanted their bikes. They're like, dude, that's a sick-ass bike. Only some rich kid from New Jersey could get a bike like that. I want one. And he's like, hey, I want your bike. But it was alien, so it just sounded like this. And he's like, ah! and he ran away with his friend, you know? I think that's what happened here. Night before had something to do with it. Either way, I've never experienced anything scarier on a beach and still have trouble explaining most of these events. The weirdest thing for me is I was never able to determine what the buzzing drone was, and to this day, have not heard anything even remotely close to it. Beaches have always terrified me. Well, not always. My fear is a direct result of what I'm about to tell you. As a kid, I used to love the shore. I remember spending many summers in eager anticipation of the weekend when my family and I would hang out at our beach house. The alien is just a fucking geek using the drone and thought that they were playing a game? Yeah, I like that theory too. House. Or, if I was lucky, they'd let me spend it at my friend Charles' beach house, which was even more fun. I was 16, and this was one of those special summer weekends. Me, Charles, and our third friend Riley were going to spend a few unsupervised days at Charles Beach House in LBI. Riley was a year older than Charles and I, and had recently gotten his license, so we'd be driving down in his car. The drive down was fantastic. Riley was a pretty uncoordinated driver at the time, so most of the ride was spent laughing at him swerving and cursing the road. It was great. We got down to LBI in good time and immediately moved all of our stuff from the car to the rooms we'd be staying in. The layout of the house is important. LBI. Large bussy inside? <gasps> no way! I need a beach scary store that has someone like in the middle of the ocean. Because that's scary. Not some more drones. Yeah, Mara, I'm going to need you to go to the beach and then come back with a good story. I don't give a fuck if it's real or not, but pass it as real, okay? Thank you. Important to the story, so I'll briefly mention it. And then put it in the confessions thing, okay? So I can read it. And then be like, oh my god! And have W clickbait, okay? So work on your Wattpad. Okay. Shit. Or don't. Just go be, um... Ooh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's 4 a.m. I can't think of it. 5 a.m. I can't think of it. 
the front door, a garage door which connects the back to the front yard, a back sliding door, and a back upstairs deck that connects the upstairs bedrooms. Man, bro, I hate rich people. I hate rich people, bro. What the fuck? Kimmy, this is more luxurious than any house I've ever been in. It's on a beach. This is our second house, too. Repeat what you said, Chris. Oh, I said, yeah, that's fire. Go, when you go to the beach, go get a crazy fucking story for me, bro. I don't give a shit if it's real or not. And then put in the confessions. So and then I can read it and be like, oh, my God, one of my viewers literally met a, a fucking an alien and it had 14 buttholes and two coochies, you know, or like whatever. Oh, oh, my God, they're a ship. Came in from the the ocean and 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 beached and my viewer Amara met this this pirate robot ro robot ro cyborg pirate cyborg that has been around since the 1700s that came from ancient Egypt aliens ancient aliens programmed it to sail the sea and it just finally came back from its mission and then she met a bunch of aliens and one's name was Gorlock and it talked like this. You know? So, work on your Wattpad skills while you're there. Or go do some belligerent... That's the word I was looking for earlier. Some belligerent shit on a beach and then get an, a good story that way, okay? Basically, what I'm saying is, Amara, your life is now a content farm. You got it? All right, good. There's also a spiral staircase that allows you to go directly from the back deck to the ground. Oh, man. So you can enter and exit the house from upstairs. The house sits along a By the way, I don't actually hate rich people, okay? I hate rich people that brag about shit, okay? Uh, this is sick. Happy for these dudes, okay? Goon, meaning the back end of- Goon! My bad, I'm so sorry. The house faces a narrow channel of water with houses on the opposite side. We were at that ripe age where chasing girls was a priority and a nice beach house all to ourselves was the perfect occasion. We spent a few hours figuring out which girls were down the shore at the time and talked to them on Snapchat. Finally, we found a group of three cute girls that said they'd be down to come kick back at Charles' house. I had more than enough weed to last us the weekend. And we yeah, some are exactly. It snagged a few bottles of our parents' alcohol before leaving. It was perfect. Things were going very well. The three girls, Rosie, Alexa, and Sophie, were fun and flirty, and the three of us could tell where the night would probably end up. At one point, the six of us decided to smoke in Charles' backyard pool. It was small, but it was perfect for six drunk kids. I remember the sight vividly. The gentle bay breeze blowing through my hair, the steam from the heated water rising slowly with the puffs of smoke from the joints. Thank you, Amara. Thank you. Hey, if it's real good, I might get 14 views. Ooh. At our age, this was bliss. But then suddenly, Charles turned the music all the way down and stared over my shoulder into the darkness of the lagoon. Confused, oh. I turned around. Um, dude, it's behind you! I'm peering into the darkness. I could roughly make out the houses on the other side of the lagoon, but I wasn't quite sure what Charles was looking at. One of the girls asked Charles why he turned the music down, and he whispered that he saw someone standing on the dock opposite the house. I figured he was messing with us, so I started laughing. Who cares, bro? People literally live here, I said. Charles shook his head. I know that family personally. My parents said they're in Florida for the week. In all honesty, I still thought it wasn't a big deal or he was just messing around, so I kept chuckling. The girls were a little freaked out, though, and said they wanted to go back inside. I wasn't going to argue, so the six of us started making our way out of the pool. As we were drying off in the yard, Riley jumped and cursed, looking towards the lagoon. Bye, Mara. Thank you for hanging. I appreciate you. Have a good rest of your day, OG. Goon. The rest of us turned, and even though the light was dim, I could definitely see what looked like movement coming from the opposite dock. The six of us froze in place, trying to get a better glimpse of what we were looking at. Just then, a passing car on the road across from us lit up the scene ever so slightly, and the sight was horrifying. There were four tall silhouettes standing at the edge of the dock, facing us. It was impossible to tell what they were wearing or what they looked like, but there was no doubt they were facing our direction. Go inside now, said Charles with a shaky voice, motioning us toward the sliding door. As we rushed inside, I heard a distinct sound that remains the most terrifying noise I'd ever heard. Four consecutive splashes rang out from behind us. Those guys were swimming across the lagoon. We were in full-on panic mode at that point. The girls screamed while Riley slammed the sliding door shut and locked it. 
Charles quickly ran to the front to lock that door too, and the six of us ran to the room that wasn't visible from the outside. We waited in silence, horrified at what we might hear next. A few minutes passed, and still nothing. Out of nowhere, Riley cursed, revealing to us that he had forgotten to lock the sliding door on the deck. Charles started to panic, knowing that this house was about to be broken into. Just then, we heard soft, quieted footsteps above us, and that was the last straw. None of us had any weapons on hand, and we were all intoxicated, so running was really our only option. The six of us sprinted for the front door and bolted to the car, which Riley started up in a flash. The chaos of it all was too much for Riley to handle, and he destroyed Charles' mailbox on the way out of the driveway. <laughs> Once we were far enough away, we called the police. The ordeal was a nightmare. We went back to the house once police had searched it, but the news was shattering. All the valuables on the top floor were missing, but that wasn't the worst part. Charles' family owned a medium-sized Boston Whaler boat, which was also stolen, most likely as the getaway vehicle. Charles' father tended to keep a spare set of keys inside a small hatch below the steering wheel, which the police concluded was how the culprits got away so quickly. How they knew where the key was hidden is something I still wonder. The police were never able to arrest the perpetrators, and likely never will. Charles, Riley, and I think whoever robbed the house might have been someone who knew Charles' family, and they knew where the key was, and the house Ooh. was supposed to be vacant that weekend as well. It's been a long time since this chilling event took place, but I haven't let one day pass without locking every door and window in my home. Do yourself a favor and lock your doors at night. Bro, you are cuckoo if you don't lock your shit, bro. Uh-uh. Uh uh. True beach horror story when a piece of wet seaweed touches you. <laughs> Beaches always terrified me, except for the majority of my life where I loved them and spent summers at a beach house. Great opening, lol. Lol. Yo, Link, what's up? I love y'all, and I'm glad I could see you. Yo, Link, love you too, homie. There's something so annoying, but also terrifying about the second story. I hate having so many questions. I know one could answer it, but it also adds to the horror because your brain just assumes the worst. Love these stories. Story two, I have to tell you how rich my family is, and it really has nothing to do with the story, but not bra I'm not bragging. Yeah, what a dork. <clears throat> Those videos should be called drone horror stories. <laughs> Can you guys imagine being stuck by a drone? Uh, yeah, dude, you'd fucking... That shit's like, you know, when they go to the range and you fucking pump the shot, blast a little uh, frisbees. Yeah, you do that with a drone, dude. The favorite thing about Nightmare, or Mr. Nightmare, is his absolutely matter of a fact delivery. <laughs> Watch this since I was in high school. Thank you for keeping the horror community alive. Hell yeah, Mr. Haunted. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think Mr. Nightmare is single handedly holding this shit down, but like, it, it is sick that he has continued to upload and stay on this path it's it's pretty sick i'm not gonna lie i i do i do think it's very commendable because i remember mr nightmare from back like when i fucking first got into watching like scary content back in the day i must admit these stories are completely unnerving being stalked by who whomever or whatever in any particular setting after dark is bad enough but being pursued by a group of people who want to rob your place of residence and potentially end your life is even worse I liked whoever had the final story gave exact or excellent advice to us all all us all to always remember to lock our doors and windows regardless of where we live. Yeah, this dude's an NPC. I'm not going to lie to you. This guy is straight up an NPC. 